Welcome to Mountain Craft Studio. My name's Christine. Come on in and I'll show you what I've been working on. So during my last video, I showed a little kit that Stacy Nash had put together for our Fancy Works um, retreat in Bloomington. And I just wanted to show you that I finished it. This is just a darling little pin keep. It came with scissors and some of the velvet to make a little strawberry that goes along with it. This is just a beautiful ribbon and she even included the backing which was a, a hand woven um, old textile from France I believe she said. That's where she picked it up. It's gorgeous. I love this little pinky. I went ahead, I did it exactly as kitted and I did distress it with some walnut crystals and I just have it tucked in a little bowl in the house. The, my stitching progress was slow. We, it's, you know, it's that time of year where I'm out in the garden with the majority of the time and just a million other things going on, softball games, that sort of thing. So I don't get as much done this time of year as I do say during the winter or anything like that. But I did get um, some progress on my um, Merrily We Welcome Spring. This is the Blackbird design. Last time I think I just had a little bit up at the top and a couple of rows here, but I did finish some more around the corner and some down this way. And I think I'm ready now to go ahead and put these back on the scroll frames. Um, I think this was my May stitch. Um, so I did stop at the end of May on this one and I picked up instead the, um, one I've been looking forward to doing a long time is the Harriet McEwen from The Wishing Thorn. I'll have to insert a picture here because I only have the um, uh, like PDF copy, so I don't have anything to show you. Uh, but I got a lot more than this done. I just want some credit for that because I had the corner done plus everything that was in this area, and I ended up having to pick it out. It was the first time I have, that's the most I've ever had to pick out at one time. And I, I was going to try to, you know, sort through it and keep some of it. And it just, it was easier just to rip it out. And so this was my June stitch. And after that happened, I put it in timeout because <laughs> I was over it. Um, you know, that happens sometimes. Not, and I'm not, ashamed to admit it, but sometimes you get defeated by it and it's just not right. But it's going to be gorgeous. It's going to have, these are the colors. And so I will continue, I think, to work on this um, during July here and there. I have some other smalls that I'm working on. And actually, I just realized I forgot to bring one out. Hang on just one second. Thank you for waiting. So I am working on The Last Rose of Summer. This is a Blackbird design. It is in the Ooh La La book. They had it finished on the top of a, a book box. I'm actually planning to put it on the side of a bag. I've mentioned this before to some, but I'll show it again. Uh, that's what I'm planning to do with mine. It's actually going to be on, you know, a little sewing bag. This comes from this book. I'm pretty sure you can still get this. It is a Martingale book, though, so you'd have to... If um, You may have to get it on the secondary market if you can't find a current source. Uh, these are the colors the, of fabrics that I'm going to... I'm going to use. I've noticed that I say I'm gonna a lot. Way more than I ever thought I would. 
So this is the stitch. These are the colors that are gonna go into the bag. I'm excited. I think it's gonna be very pretty. So this is more or less my July stitch. I've uh, decided that my New Year's resolution to just to start one sampler a month was completely unrealistic <laughs> for the summer uh, the summer month. So I uh, have decided that I'm just going to set that aside for a little while. Maybe next year it'll be every other month. That might be a little bit more realistic. I have done lots of traveling. Um, like I said, my uh, my granddaughter plays softball, so we've been at a lot of softball games. There's just been a lot going on, um, several retreats, um, that sort of thing. So I've just gotten behind on several things, and that includes my Morning Glory Needlework Stitch a Day project. So I should have several rows more than this done, but you know, things happen. Uh, and once I started traveling, it's it's a bigger project, so traveling with it isn't. Um, as easy and by bigger project. I mean that there's, you know, a whole book of patterns. So it's just not, it doesn't make for a good travel stitch. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually trying to do two stitches a day to catch up. So eventually I will and I'll go on from there. But I am still loving this project. This is really not every, um, stitch that introduced is introduced is a favorite. Some of them I'm not fond of at all. Some of them uh, take quite a bit of time and some of them are super, super fast. Um, but they're all beautiful, I will say that. They are all lovely. And just the whole idea of this, it's gonna be so pretty when it's done. I'm gonna hold this up a little bit closer so that you can see what it looks like. Very cool, very fun project. Still enjoying that one. Then, let's see, something big happened lately. What was it? Oh, yeah, StitchCon. <laughs> so, uh, StitchCon was interesting. That was my first time. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Absolutely uh, had a great time. I, I drove and I picked up uh, Tammy Blaylock, who is Creative Country Girl. Uh, she makes uh, a lot of bags that that's what she's known for and we she lives on the way there and so I picked her up and we got over there the day before and we were able to go uh, shopping at keepsakes and doing a bunch of other things um, before the event started and I managed to spend my entire budget um, in about five minutes at keepsakes <laughs> which I've heard I'm not the only one so I feel better about that uh, but I got some great things. I don't normally uh, share my haul um, on this channel, but I wanted to show some things regarding SitchCon. So uh, at Keepsakes, it's, if you haven't been, which, you know, some people still haven't, it is in a, a house that is in um, kind of a, a right next to a shopping district. So we, um, when you go in, there's just stuff everywhere. And it's like finding little treasures around every little corner. It's, and you'll see just samples galore and find things that you haven't seen before, which I found amazing because I look at things, cross-stitch things a lot. Uh, but I found um, this little ditty, which I have seen this one before, but I loved it. And so I picked it up. I saw the sample there too. This uh, farm uh, where we live now used to be a dairy farm and I have kind of a collection of things in the kitchen. Um, I have a, a milk can and a milk bottle and some other things and I thought that would be really cute too. Um, this one's called Bessie too. I just How can you not like that? Uh, but I bought that because I do want to get that one finished fairly quickly. That's going to in, invade my uh, 2023 list of things to stitch um, and then this one I've seen this one several times lately that people are stitching or have stitched and I love it this is um, absolutely my style so I'm definitely gonna add that in at some point um, let's see 
there was this one. This is a, a designer I had not seen before. This was their June basket. It's very cute. Look how adorable that is. Sorry for the glare. Let me see if I can get some of that off. And this is the designer. There were 12 different designs, but they were all just cute little pillows. So go check this designer out. They were super cute. I love the little bee on this one. I just think that like a darling spring, uh, spring pen keep. Then of course, um, I found this, that this was, I've seen this one dozens of times. This is a Scarlet House. Um, I'm a weaver. I love coverlets. I have to have this. It's gorgeous. Definitely, definitely on my long-term to-do list. Um, and then, I think that was it for, no, and then I also picked up some of the, um, the primitive hair linen, because I have a project in mind for this, so I was happy to see that there. So that, I think, was my stitch, con or the, yeah, I think that was my keepsakes purchases. I didn't, I planned on not spinning anything because I really don't need anything. It didn't work out that way. Everybody says that and you think, oh, I've got control. I can, maybe not. Uh, so then we get to go to StitchCon. It was very, very entertaining. They, I'm trying to explain. So I, um, I met Janine in the parking lot when we got there in the morning. She was walking in at the same time Tammy and I were. And so um, she'd never been to a stitch con either. So we kind of hooked up to brave the, <laughs> the masses. There's a huge line when you first get there in the morning and you, you kind of just have to follow the herd and you know they know what they're doing. Uh, but once we got in and got settled, I had a great time with um, all of these ladies. I'll insert a picture here that were at my table. Lots of fun. It was great fun getting to know everybody. Um, and we got to look at um, all of the massive amount of incredible work that was on the brag table. I'm gonna show a few pictures here. I didn't take video of the whole thing. I didn't take pictures of the whole thing because when you're there and you've got 300 people to talk to, you trying to do anything to stay focused on anything for more than two seconds is, is hard. So I took a picture of a few favorites, things that I was wanting to look up later or whatever, and I'll just go ahead and share those with you. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the name of the maker on all of these. I should have taken more pictures of the cards didn't think about it. I'll be better prepared next time. But here's just a few of the glorious things that were at the event. Then there's the annex, which is just a huge room full of wonderful goodies of trunk shows that people send in uh, that you can go in and shop from. And of course, I did that. So <laughs> uh, it took me a while. I actually let, uh, let it go for a while, but then I, I just had to have a few things. So one of them was um, Cozy Into Winter. By Jeanette Douglas because that's just classic beautiful Christmas I don't do tons of um, holiday decorating anymore I used to go all out but not anymore um, but I like that that could work um, and then Teresa Koga her she had all of her samples were there and if you see those in person I mean you're just you know you can't help but be in awe she 
is such a wonderful artist and does such a great job with color and whatnot. This, um, maybe I took a picture of these. If I did, I'll, I'll insert those here. These, this is Tuna Bush, which she had there. I'm trying to remember what it was displayed on. I'll put, throw in a picture. And then come to the garden. And maybe it's because I was so busy. You know, I'm doing a lot of landscaping work this year. Finally, we have some landscaping going in. But I just, man, this is so pretty. And seeing it in person, it was just gorgeous. Gorgeous. The border, everything about it is just beautiful. Love it. Uh, so I'm, hopefully I'll get to doing that at some point. There were... Um, a couple of other things. Actually, I think these came from keepsakes. So you're going to notice a trend as I go along um, in some things. Um, I have a thing for sheep. I used to have, this is Brenda Gervais. Boo and Bobble. Absolutely adorable. Love that. Um, I used to have sheep. I used to have, I started out my little flock. I had a, a hobby farm, more or less, and a fiber farm. And I had, um, I started out with four little Shetland sheep. Uh, their names, uh, they were named after the Golden Girls, each one of them. Um, surprisingly, I named them on the way home when I picked them up, and they all kind of fit their characters. <laughs> Sophia was my, uh, right by my side. She was like a dog. She just all would come up and ask to be petted. But anyway, I love sheep. I think they're one of the best animals ever. People don't realize how um, much character they have and how um, affectionate they can be. They're just like dogs. Like, they are absolutely as friendly as can be if they're around people all the time. If they're not, then yeah, they're like the sheep you see where they all, the huge herds and things like that, if they're not used to people. But if they're used to people, they are absolutely unique, each and every one of them. Um, I had one that was black. Her name was Shirley. It was Laverne and Shirley. And she was always pierced with something, like a twig or whatever. She was my goth sheep. She was the only one that was standoffish, but the rest of them were extremely affectionate. Uh, I saw this Lulu's flock, Chessie and me. This was also um, done at Keepsakes, and I'll insert a picture here. They had, I think, done it with um, an alphabet instead of some of what's on here. I think it's the same one. Maybe I'm thinking of something different. Anyway, those sheep are so cute. They look just like the ones that are um, with the black heads and the curly hair. What are they? Oh, the Valenay black nose sheep. They're the cutest sheep on the planet. So, had to have that. Uh, and then there were some free things. There was a uh, summer bees and flower stitch that Teresa Kogut had uh, given away. There was this, there was a free table. And this was on the free table. So I picked it up. There was no, it was just, it came with the other stuff. There was no actual envelope or anything with it, but that's fine. I will do it. I like it. I'm not sure where this came from. It just says instructions to work the green sampler. Um, so I don't know, there's no way for me to, it says Kathleen Smith, her sampler worked January 20th, in the year of our Lord, 1987, West Chesterfield, Massachusetts. If anybody has any more information on that, and they can let me know, that'd be great. Because I don't remember this. Uh, and then there was a book that Family Circle, Make It Country, I think I have this way back when. <laughs> It looks familiar anyway. Um, there was one night I wanted to sit and just read at the end of the day to try to focus on some stuff. And I, so I picked this up thinking I would take it back and put it back on the free table the next day. But then there were things in here that I liked. So I thought, hmm, I think maybe I'll keep this for a while. Um, just some cute things. There was, this is a crochet thing or something like that, but you could readapt that pattern to a cross stitch or whatever. So that was fun. Uh, Let's see. And then, 
So, uh, every night there was something different going on. And one of the, the I think the last evening, um, it was, there was an auction, um, to raise money. And the, um, keepsakes was, had chosen St. Joseph's home as their service project for the year. And that is one that is near and dear to my heart. I, um, growing up, had a cousin uh, who uh, had cerebral palsy, and even though he was older than me, I often uh, would stay with him when his parents had to go out and that sort of thing. And um, he was one of a, uh, he was a twin. And so it was always interesting to reflect on his life and then his twin brother's life. Um, but then I also, as an adult, when I married my husband, he has a sister that also had special needs. And if you know these people and intimately like that, you know that they are gifts to the people, to the families um, that they're in. The ability to see life through their eyes is just a wonderful, wonderful thing. And if there is a way to improve their lives, um, we should absolutely be doing it right? Whatever it is. And so Jay St. Joseph's home is trying to do that. They are trying to provide some therapies and things that, um, will increase the quality of life for people like that and their families. And so it was an important, um, uh, it was a, an important cause near and dear to my heart. So when they started auctioning things off, I knew I was going to bid on something. And so I also knew that of the things that they were auctioning. The one thing I really needed and didn't have um, was some silk. And so I went a little nuts. <laughs> and I went ahead and bought the entire set of the thread gatherer silken colors. Hopefully you can see that. These are gorgeous. Like this whole, this clump right here is the solids. There's all kinds of stuff. And these are the variegated. And I think these will be absolutely perfect for when I'm working on my reproduction samplers. My Scandinavian samplers, a lot of them are done in silk. Uh, and I think these colors are gonna be perfect. So excited. Um, and then I forgot these. The Speaking of silk, uh, I purchased these in the annex uh, from Eminem's studio. She is a doll. We went to dinner one night. Just adore her. Look at these. Is it, won't that be beautiful together? Ooh, glorious. I just wanna go ahead and make something up to use these. The dusty color is just gorgeous. I love it. So that was that. And then as we were leaving, uh, they were handing out little uh, things to put on a, a bag or whatever. And the theme, there was a bicycle. You've probably seen it a dozen times. And so there's a little bicycle term in there. But then there was also get it out of the bag. There was also a black cat. So I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be for Stitch Connor. There's a story about this black cat that showed up at the keepsakes, but it's an Agnes. How cute is that? So throughout the event, we would have to go out for dinner uh, and we went to some amazing local restaurants and had a great time, really enjoyed that. And while we were doing one, we passed, I think it might have been the first night, we passed an antique mall. <laughs> and at that point we had eaten so much, we needed to walk around a little bit anyway, right? So uh, we stopped, Tammy and I, I think were the only ones that stopped that night and we went and found um, all kinds of fun little things at the, um, antique mall. I'm not going to show all of them, but, um, I did pick up a few and as the event, um, went on, we ended up going back every night, <laughs> except I think for the last night, um, 
uh, and we kept collecting more people to come with us. I have a picture here of some of us. Um, and we just had a grand time. There was, it was enormous. The reason we kept going back every night is we hadn't seen it all. There was 550 booths or something like that. It was crazy. I've never been to a place that big. Um, but I found some fun things. So a few of the stitch related things. Um, when I think the night we went one night and, uh, Shelly from Antique Needle Workers joined us along with Van from, um, Crazy Band Lace Stitches. I'm trying to think of, there were lots, there were a lot of people that went in two different vehicles. And so, um, as we were walking around at one point, um, uh, Shelly had picked up, I think maybe Van picked it up and handed it to Shelly or no, maybe it was Janine. Anyway, uh, Shelly had this in her hand and I grabbed it from her. I said, that's mine. <laughs> and she let me have it because I told her I have a perfect spot for it to go. I knew that I wanted it. It was the right shape to go on top of my giant spool, thread spool. How cute is it? Love it. So thank you, Shelly, for letting me have it. The, um, one of the other fun things I found were these little vintage, um, it says twinkle on it and they're just these little tins. I see fun things being made out of this. In the future, I have an idea. We'll see what happens. Uh, I always love to pick up things like that, that I can find a use for. As I was um, wandering around, I looked up at one point and saw this. This is a, um, a skein winder for anyone, an umbrella swift, it's called. And so um, I love, this is an, is an antique. The finish on it is gorgeous. And so I wanted this for the cabin. So I picked it up. And I'm trying to think of what else. Um, the last thing I found, well, there's a lot of other things I found. I'll throw a picture in here. I found the most amazing clock that's going to go down to the cabin. I loved it. I texted my husband when I found it and told him what the price was and just had a question mark. I just wanted to see if, you know, he liked it because I've bought a clock in the past that he didn't like. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure. So I only set the picture and the price and the question mark and he texted back, are you sick? Have you been kidnapped? Are you signaling me? What is this? <laughs> because I don't usually ask permission to buy anything. So he just, anyway, I thought that was funny. Uh, so did everybody else. The, uh, then I found this. This is, um, hi, love this. Not everybody's going to love this. I realize it. it's a sheep. You can tell that it's a sheep. It's obvious. My husband didn't think it looked like a sheep, but... You can tell a little bit better from the back, maybe, but it's a, it's a sheep. It needs some work done. The person, whoever hooked it, um, left the, um, cut these off on the back and they were, have worked their way out, so they need to be tucked back in. And there are a few on the back that need to be done as well. The it had been finished off, I think, with some rug tape at some point, but they just glued it on and it has since fallen off. So I'll repair that as well. Uh, but I like it. I like it a lot. That one will probably also go to the cabin. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'll stay here. Actually, you know what? We're almost done. Well, we're a long way off, but <laughs> we've got, we've got walls up in the back part. There, that door right there in the back part of the studio. So that's going to be where all the wool things go. So I'll probably put it back there. We have insulation and two by fours and all kinds of stuff going on back there. A little bit of electricity. It's exciting. Uh, definitely looking forward to that. So after all the excitement of StitchCon, I get back home and I'm relaxing and something shows up in the mail and I'm like, Ooh, what's this? And I open it and I'm just flabbergasted when I see it. So, uh, a lot of you will know her as the selfish stitcher on Instagram. Um, her name's Anne and she 
found this and repaired it for me and sent it on. So look at this. It's a needle point. Looks like it was a, a kit, like maybe a dimensions kit from the 80s. It says 19, circa 1980 on it. But look how perfect that is for, not only does it look like my cabin, right? But I sent her a picture. I used to work at a living history museum and I worked in the loom house and I sent her a picture of the loom house. I'll put that in here too, so that you can see how perfect this is. I love it. She said she considered making it into a project role uh, for me, which I thought, oh, that's a good idea. I haven't quite figured out what, what I'm gonna make out of it, but I love it. It's definitely going, um, it's definitely going somewhere where I can see it. I don't want it necessarily rolled up and put away, so probably maybe not a project role. Um, I've got a couple ideas going on. But I absolutely love that. That's such a wonderful stitchy kindness. Thank you so much, Anne. So cute. It even has an Agnes look. <laughs> ah, too cute. Okay. So I'm going to switch places because I've got some quilty things to show you and it'll be easier if I take you over there. So a former classmate of mine contacted me and said that they were trying to raise money to uh, bring back the, the midway and the fun of the local 4-H fair where I grew up. Uh, and I said, absolutely. I know that the when these small communities um, just can't compete with some of the bigger ones in order to attract the carnivals and so it becomes very expensive um, to try to do everything and it's something that you know I have fond memories of and um, it's where my grandkids live and I'd like for them to have some of the same memories so I said absolutely I happen to have this Moda kit in my stash and I knew that it would be perfect with being it farm related and so I went ahead and put it together and um, long arm quilted it and I'm gonna give it to her this week and hopefully it will help raise some money uh, in order to support, you know, future years. And I'm already starting to think of um, trying to get ideas on something I could make for next year as well for the same purpose. Um, so if, if you have any 4-H fair related ideas for a quilt, let me know. Thanks. So I had the opportunity to help out at an event recently at the Tippecanoe Historical Society. We gathered lots of quilts from the community and recorded their stories. Uh, I was able to help assess um, the quilts, date them, um, and determine what the names of the the patterns were. Um, and, was great fun. The Historical Society actually has in the past recorded many um, quilts, not only from their collection, but others in the, the quilt registry. Um, I'll put a link in the description box below. If you um, are interested in learning a little bit more about antique quilts, the, the quilt registry is a great place to go and uh, do some research uh, on quilts that have been um, recorded there from all over the country. The quilts that I took with me at, were quilts that were definitely from the Tippecanoe County area. And so um, we were able to record things about them, such as um, the, the, I had some really old thick quilts that were my brother and I used when we were kids. Um, our farmhouse didn't have any heat upstairs and so we needed quilts that were that thick. Um, but that's just the kind of story that we were hoping to capture uh, about the quilts. Uh, so many antique quilts, we can look at them now, we have no idea who made them, where they came from, why they were made, um, who slept under them, that sort of thing. Um, and now with this quilt project, we can hopefully record a little bit of that for future generations. I'll insert some more photos here so that you can see just a few of the things that were, um, that we were able to take a look at that weekend.
So every year during the month of July, spinners from all across the globe gather together online for the Tour de Fleece. Every day that the Tour de France runs, spinners take to their wheels and spin as much yarn as they can. Some people are incredibly competitive um, and they spin miles and miles of yarn. Other groups get together and just enjoy the um, camaraderie of a team. And some people just spin 15 minutes a day or whatever. There's lots of different uh, ways to go about it. And uh, in the beginning, it started out as a charitable project and it just has grown into a, a huge thing that all fiber artists participate in if you're a spinner. I've been doing it for years and years and I look forward to it every year. I started spinning back when I first bought those sheep. I bought four little Shetland sheep uh, in order to keep the uh, the lawn mowed. We had uh, seven acres and my husband, you know, got really tired of, of mowing all of that. And so I said, you know, I think if we got some sheep, we wouldn't have to mow so much, which was true. It's absolutely true. Um, in the end, looking back, it probably would have been less expensive to hire someone to come and mow it. But that's, <laughs> that would have taken all the fun out of it. Uh, so we, I brought home my four little sheep and enjoyed having them. And then at one point said, you know, I think I'm supposed to do something with their wool. I'm going to learn. And uh, I took a class originally at a place um, in Martins, near Martinsville, Indiana. Um, what was the name of it? It's escaping me. It's not there any longer. They ended up moving to Maine, I think. Um, but it was just a, a wonderful place to go, and I was able to spin on several different wheels. Um, I knew that I was, <laughs> I knew that I was only ever gonna have one spinning wheel. Um, and so I wanted to buy a good one, and the one that worked for me. All spinning wheels are a little bit different. And um, I remember uh, working on a shacked matchless, which is what I'm spinning on now. And it was going to be able to do everything I ever wanted it to do forever. And that is still true. Um, I actually bought, this is a cherry version. Uh, they usually come in maple. Uh, but I since have collected a few more spinning wheels than this. Um, <laughs> but this is the one that I go back to all the time. It's, uh, I have the most accessories for this wheel. Um, so that's part of it. Um, but it's just a beautiful wheel that is a pleasure to spin on. It's a workhorse. So whether, whether I want to make really tiny, fine lace, or if I want to make big, thick, chunky yarn, this wheel can do it all. So uh, in most of my projects, no matter what it is, whether it's you know stitching or quilting or whatever, I usually am a product-motivated crafter. Um, with spinning, it is not, it's absolutely all about the process for me. I, this, as you can see, is very calm. It's something you can sit and do and watch while, while you're watching TV, or in most cases, I sit and I have these windows, these curtains open, and I just watch what's going on out there in the world. And it's my calming time. It's very meditative. Uh, you're focusing on what's going on in between your fingers and the feel of the, the soft wool. I'm spinning a merino nylon blend here, which is super soft. Um, and it's just the rhythmic motions of your feet is, um, it's very therapeutic. When I'm spinning on a great wheel, which is one of the large, uh, huge wheels. Um, it's also uh, therapeutic in its own way, but it's different. There's more 
physical activity involved. You walk back and forth. So a lot of people call it a walking wheel. Um, you're moving your arm in big circles, um, that sort of thing. I, I still enjoy spinning on a great wheel, but not as much as I do on this type of castle wheel. I have a Jensen at the cabin, which I love. Uh, a Jensen is a, a manufacturer. He, it's one man, he's a craftsman, and he just makes absolutely beautiful, beautiful wheels. And my friend, Christine, uh, we uh, swapped some items one time and she gave me hers. She had had it for years and years and never ended up becoming a full-time spinner. She was a full-time quilter, so I gave her a hand quilting rack that I never became a full-time hand quilter. Uh, so it worked out beautifully. Now, I love that wheel. It's fabulous. It's also a pleasure to spin on. If you ever think that you might want to try spinning, but you don't want to go out and buy a spinning wheel because they are rather expensive, um, you might want to try learning on a drop spindle first. Those are absolutely um, more affordable. The act of doing the drop spindle is, um, they actually, when I learned, went to, took a class to learn how to spin, they first taught me on a drop spindle and I think that everybody should probably learn that at first. Um, it just gets you to understand the mechanics of what is involved in making yarn. And it will make you appreciate the spinning wheel immensely. <laughs> the, um, I just had the hard, I did more dropping than spinning when I worked on a drop spindle. It was hard for me. I still have several spindles. They're beautiful. Uh, the only issue with spindles is that they come, they're kind of like potato chips, you need more than one. Uh, so I try to steer clear of that. But spinning has brought me great joy over the years. Um, there's something just beautiful about it. And I think it helps to, like for those of us that enjoy history and that sort of thing to, to kind of think back of what lives were like. They used to uh, spin, spend a lot of time doing this. I probably would have been okay with that. Not everybody would, but I, I would have liked it. But as the month that goes on, I'm gonna go ahead and take some videos uh, to show you as I go what's happening and what my end result after the Tour de Fleece ends up. We'll see how much yarn I actually get spent. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful summer and I'll see you again soon.